Good evening, and welcome to the Henry Schein Dental Academy webinar series. My name is Corinne, and I will be your moderator. We are excited to welcome Dr. Brett Titanser as our speaker today, as he will be providing a closer look at the role CBCT plays in implant dentistry. Before we get started, we do have a few reminders for you. At any point during the webinar, if you have questions, please type them into the Q&A section of your control panel, and we will answer them live at the end. Henry Schein is not offering CE credit for viewing or attending this presentation live or on demand. Dr. Titan, sir, welcome and thank you for being with us. Hey, happy to be here. Mm -hmm. um, welcome everybody, see everybody's flowing in. My name is Dr. Brett Titan, sir. Um, I hail from Dallas, Texas uh, in a town called Flower Mound. It's just north of the DFW airport. I'm a general dentist who loves to do everything digital and have really, really gotten involved in, with guided implant dentistry. And I love the technology that's involved. It makes it just so much easier. And, and I'm happy to be here tonight to um, either give an intro to some of you or expound on uh, some things that if you're already placing and plants guided, and hopefully you can find some gems from this. Um, but I like to try to get people involved. I know there's pro some pros and cons from doing things online. A lot of us probably have gotten used to it over these last few years uh, with COVID. Um, they are super convenient, of course, and but I do miss the interaction. So um, use the chat function um, if you can, uh, post questions. Um, even right now, if somebody could post, if tell us where you're from, like to see where people are calling in from, um, post in the chat, we can get the chat going. Um, so, so don't hesitate to hesitate there. So I've been teaching with Henry Shine, um, for, for four or five years. Um, I am their level one CERC trainer. So I do all things CERC as well. Um, I've also been able to teach uh, things uh, in regards to combing technology, implant dentistry. Um, I'm still a, a general dentist. That's what pays the bills. However, uh, teaching is just a passion and uh, I love meeting dentists like you guys and gals. Um, I always learn a lot from doing these. Um, Looks like we're getting some people. We got Miami, Ohio, Arizona, Louisville. Hey, that's next door. Um, nice to have you here. But um, also it's teaching has brought me to some um, other opportunities. I was able to teach every year um, up until COVID hit on um, some army bases throughout the US. They are adopting this technology which I think makes total sense. You know, you want things faster and, and more available to soldiers who could be deployed. Um, so it's exciting that they're getting into this as well. We got people from New York, Maryland, welcome. Um, one of the highlights, um, milestones for me, uh, I was able to be on the, as uh, one of the speakers at Densply Sorona World uh, this last year in Las Vegas. Um, that, was, that was always like a goal of mine. If you didn't see me there, it's probably is I was Friday at 5 p.m. So so some of you might have already been hitting the slots, but um, just just love teaching, love sharing, and uh, hopefully you guys can learn from tonight. Um, when I'm not teaching, I do have, have kids. This is uh, us doing a 24 bag Home Alone Lego set um, that we just finished this last week. Um, let me just tell you. Um, you could probably plan and place a hundred dental implants in the amount of time it took for us to complete this set. All right, which uh, kind of leads me to my next point. Um, digital dentistry makes implant, digital technology makes implant dent dentistry a breeze. All right, you can be like this guy when you implement some of this technology and I hope to show you that. Uh, tonight and uh, to kind of inspire you to do the same. 
So a little bit of overview on some of our goals for tonight. Um, so we're definitely, we're gonna go over uh, really a lot of the basics there. There are limitations on what we can and how much detail we can show in the short amount of time on one of these webinars. And so I know there's probably a full range of people on here. Those of you who may be new to this, those of you who aren't placing implants yet, and those who've been placing implants um, tw twice as long as I have, um, but hopefully by showing you some of these things, it's, it'll be helpful for the full range of people. Um, I want to talk about the benefits of guided implant dentistry. I think it is the best way to go. Um, I truly believe that now, especially as things have gotten easier to, to produce the surgical guide, it just makes more and more sense to do things guided. And especially being a general dentist, I feel like maybe the, the standards are held a little higher if we want to make sure that we're doing everything we can possible to make sure those implants um, are, are a success. And, um, and this can help with that. And then a bulk amount of time tonight, I would love to just dive in hands-on, um, show you what the technology, show you what the software looks like and how to actually use the software to plan out an implant and uh, show you some of the tips and tricks I like to use when doing that and how, how I use it with my patients. And um, that'll be a great time for those of you to ask questions and um, um, also inspire you guys. Again, can't go into all the details. I can't show you everything, but uh, hopefully you leave here with some inspiration to go, to go do it yourself. Um, we are doing a series of webinars. So, so hopefully if we get good feedback, I'll be back and we can uh, dive into another aspect or detail on this workflow and uh, to continue to uh, learn together. All right, so again, chat. So if anybody wants to post in the chat, does anybody currently own a CBCT? And if so, uh, what brand do you like? Do you have? Um, also, who is currently placing implants? Anybody 100% guided? All right. So, so okay, we have a Vatec. Um, I actually was looking into getting a Vatec. I'll, I'll, here in a second, I'm going to show you guys what I have in my practice. Um, and, and the things that I'm gonna show you, what technology I need to be able to make that happen. However, there are some workarounds. You can use different brands and things, um, but with an asterisk, some of the seamless uh, workflows only works if you have everything that I'm about to show you. But I was placing and making uh, 3D printing surgical guides well before I had uh, a dense by Serona CBCT. I had a Gendex. Um, so those of you, like I said, yeah, looks like we have some Vatec, um, a Plan Mecca. As long as you can produce a comb beam, you can do a lot of these things that, that I'm going to show you. May have a little bit of workarounds, but it is possible. Um, we have 100% guided. Way to go, Doc. I love to see that. Um, I really think we could all get to the point where it would just make sense to do all of our dental implants with a, with a 3D printed surgical guide. Um, and that's, my, that's how I do it. In fact, it's, I'm to the point where I never place an implant without a surgical guide. It just, it just makes sense to me. So um, let's dive in. All right, so the digital dentistry we have at our fingertips now has kind of, it's created an ecosystem, I like to say. It just synergizes and works off of each other. And when they all come together, they just sing and makes it, uh, makes dentistry, things that weren't possible uh, yesterday, possible today. Um, I think it makes dentistry faster, safer, and better um, for us as clinicians and uh, hands down better for our patients. Um, but before I really dive into to showing you these things, I, I want to show you what I have and um, what you would need. All right. So Santa, bring out your Christmas lists because um, uh, it can be, I get it, it can be a little daunting uh, investing into these things. Um, I can 
bring you aside on chat and tell you why I feel like the investment is sound. And uh, we're not really supposed to go into the dollars they said tonight, but um, investing in, in your practice and into technology, I've, I've never regretted it. And it has only helped increase more production. It's only helped make my life less stressful and my patient experience better. And uh, so I, I would not hesitate. All right, so let's go into it. First of all, um, you will need a intraoral scanner of some type. So I have the Densply Serona Prime scans. I have two of them. Um, real easy to get, capture the information you need. You need an intraoral scan of the patient. And, and that is the information that the surgical guide is designed off of. Okay, so the first thing you need is an intraoral scan scanner so you can decide your guide off of. Second thing, you'll need a comb beam CT. All right, I noticed that uh, yeah, a number of you guys have one. I think they are absolutely vital in uh, implant dentistry. It's like almost should be a requirement. The things you can see in a 3D image um, for whether it's treatment planning or avoiding complications, um, which we'll, we'll kind of go into here in a little bit. Um, I could not practice without my comb beam. In fact, that thing just spins all day long. If it's not going, it's not a good day because uh, it's just, it's so valuable in, in my practice. All right. So when you're going, starting to do some of this stuff uh, that's more tech heavy technology, I like to just go big on a computer, a really nice fancy one. It makes the downloading and the processing, everything just so much faster. I don't like to wait. So um, just get with your niece and nephew who's like the best gamer and ask them what kind of computer they would recommend if they wanted to play um, the latest game. And that's probably going to be good. So this is what I have. It's an Alienware um, Aurora R12, uh, super fast probably more than I would need, but um, I love it. There's no delay in the processing. It makes it really seamless. Even my monitor's big. Uh, this, is, I, this was my Christmas present to myself last year. It's a 49 inch ultra wide curved screen. And you can see when I'm planning these implants, I got the whole screen. Um, uh, there and, and if it's a Friday and patients are gone, I can even watch Netflix while I plan these. So um, really nice to have, um, but absolutely not necessary, of course. And then a 3D printer. Okay, so once you've designed and you have the STL file, the design for your surgical guide, you need to print those. Uh, there are labs that can print them for you, but it's so much easier to print them in your office. Um, once I've placed and plan where my implant needs to go, my assistants take over from there. They do all of the um, uh, processing. They get it all ready for the surgery day and the organization. Um, that is everything an assistant can do. And um, I do have kind of the Sprint Ray ecosystem. It's called the Sprint Ray Pro. Um, that's what you see right here in the middle. Off to the side, this is a pro cure. So it's like a resin, so it needs to fully cure. This fully cures and sterilizes the material. Um, this is what's called the pro wash. So once it comes out of the printer, there's some residual resin that needs to burn off. And this makes it seamless and easy. Uh, you literally take the tray out of the printer, you put it into this machine with one button. It does the processing for you. And um, it's just um, easy. Um, you'll see my model trimmer off to the right. That thing's for sale if anybody wants that. Um, we don't do impressions anymore. Um, it's, it's just gotten to the point where we do it all digital now. So no more gooey impression. My, my patients are very happy about that. All right. So if there's no questions, of course, like I said, post any questions on, on what you need. But let's dive into the workflow. 
All right. So with that full ecosystem, especially if you had a mill in your office, for instance, you can take, you can go from start to finish from planning the case to three printing the surgical guide to the placement surgery, all the way to the final product, the final crown, all in-house, in office, if you'd like. Um, it's there and it's, it's great. Um, today, we're gonna focus in just on these first few steps um, from the data capture and then mainly focusing on the uh, implant planning using that CBCT and the planning software. All right, so this is kind of what it looks like, okay? So first of all, you need to get a comb beam, a DICOM, which produces a DICOM file, okay? So you get your CT scan on the patient. Um, so this is kind of appointment one. You capture the CT scan, and then you get an intraoral scan on the patient. From that intraoral scan, if you're using something like the, the prime scan, you can actually design the crown, the final restoration, um, so you can use that when planning the implant, um, which you'll see here on the bottom left. If anybody can uh, look, you kind of see that blue outline. That is the same crown that was designed in the software, now superimposed on top of my CT scan. So that way I know exactly where that implant's going to go in relationship to the to final restoration. I think this is a definitely an uh, overlooked step that um, is so vital in a successful implant case. Um, I've had some cases that weren't great or came from a surgeon who was in great bone, but in a very difficult place to restore. And, um, and, and that can be troublesome, but this way you can ensure that implant is going exactly where it needs to go um, by planning it with the final crown in place. So if you have a mill, you can even mill these. Um, however, it's gotten so much easier to 3D print them. And uh, so I 3D print all my guides. And um, this, this actually, uh, doing surgery guided was a limiting factor, I think cost-wise before. I used to make, uh, I send them off to a company called Anatomage and they would charge me 320 to $360 per surgical, surgical guide which isn't a lot, but you know, when it comes to implant dentistry, the costs of the patients get up there by the time of implant placement and rest restoration and sometimes bone grafting, things like that. The more we can keep our costs down, we can kind of uh, turn those savings to our patient. And so now 3D printing for me out the door cost is $21 a guide. Um, and that includes everything, the resin and the cost to, to export the image. So um, really, really cost effective in, in getting a guide. And then from there, once you have your surgical guide, it's printed and you use that guide uh, for your surgery. And what the guide does is it has a stops for your implant drills. So you make your osteotomies um, exactly to the location that you planned your implant in, in the software. And not only that, uh, my version, I can even place my implant through the surgical guide. So there's really good stability as I'm placing that implant. And I'm telling you, nothing feels better than uh, placing an implant through, through a surgical guide that you know is going to that exact place you want it to. Um, it's actually become my favorite procedure in my office. Um, of course, to do fillings, crowns, veneer cases, but um, implant dentistry has become um, just just absolute passion and, and favorite part of, of practicing now. So let's talk about some of the benefits, and uh, I'll show you some of my cases and some some of my cases or some of some cases that aren't mine uh, that that did not use surgical guide is my assumption that. Uh, can lead to some complications. So using uh, some of the benefits um, is definitely in the uh, an accurate assessment and patient communication. Um, you can only place the implants that you sell, right? Um, so having something that is really professional, um, just the technology when you show the patients this, it really is impressive. Um, I feel like I am a younger dentist 
and the credibility you get as soon as you slap a CT scan and you walk it through with the patient in front of them that you get, um, I think is priceless. So I use it all the time for patient communication. Um, of course, the precise placement and predictability. I love predictability. I love cases that I know beforehand that, uh, that things are gonna go well. Um, of course, there are things that are unforeseen things, but, but really honestly, very little. Like when you plan these out, you know what you're getting yourself into. You know cases to refer, you know what cases to stay away from, um, and you know what cases that are just going to be a slam dunk. Um, so, so having that is just really nice. Um, we have a question from Gary. What software? So the, the design software that designs the crown, I use the CEREC software. That's what comes with the prime scan. And then for the implant um, planning software, which I'm about to switch to in a little bit, I use SciCat 2.0. So it's the software that comes with the Dead Supply Serona uh, CBD, CBCT scans. Um, it is available to download. Uh, for those of you who don't have one, you can still purchase it and import your DICOM from whatever CT scan you have. That's where I said you can use um, other CT scans with this software. You just have to download the software. Um, so great question, Gary. All right, and then of course the avoiding complications. Um, that's my number one thing. Dentistry can be super stressful, um, and it goes from here to there when when you hit complications and upset patients. So um, definitely knowing what you're getting into. I always tell patients we measure twice, cut once, and everybody gets that. All right. So so just real quick, here's a. I don't know if you guys see this, but this was a text to my dad. He's a dentist. He's kind of semi-retired, but I texted this photo of a case I did. And he said, you just placed? Perfect. And uh, yes, I did. I'm really liking these guides. So that was 2018. So I've been doing this for uh, three or four years now. And, um, and I have, I just, I'm really, really loving these surgical guides. All right, so here's just a snapshot. I'm gonna dive into the software right off the bat and kind of show you um, what it looks like. Um, so let's give an example of what I would do if I was trying to communicate with a patient who would possibly need a sinus lift. Okay, so I'm gonna switch over here to my software. And Corinne, just let me know if anything um, is not showing up. So, well, so here's yeah. what this here's what this looks like. Thanks, Corinne. So this is the SciCat suite. This is the SciCat implant software. Like I said, this is available to download for those of you who do not have a Dentsply Serona CT scanner. Um, I love this software. It to me, it, it even enhances the image. The image looks really clear. Um, it lets you see everything that you need. And um, so what I do when I get that CT scan and the intraoral scan, I bring these up right away with my patients. And um, it gets to the point where um, you've done enough of these that you can plan in places. It may be not exactly where you want. You can tweak them later, but you can throw these in real quick and show the patient um, the case. And so here's a case where we're looking to restore tooth number 14 and 15. Um, you see on the upper left here, um, when we're looking at tooth number 14, we can kind of look at the view from the side. Um, we can see here that tooth number 14 really, really looks okay. Like we have enough bone getting close to the sinus. However, um, it's looking like we'll be able to place this implant without um, getting into the sinus. I can see the space. I love this orange box. This is kind of your safety margins. It automatically displays for you. Um, you can change these to, to what level you want. I have two millimeters from the apex. Um, I have 1.5 from the, it's just kind of according to what the studies have shown what kind of bone you want around your implant. And so I'm able to show my patient, hey, this is gonna be slam dunk. Um, uh, very little complications from this one. But um, if we look at tooth number 15, however, 
um, you see that um, he's had some uh, some bone loss. That sinus has dipped into that area, making it to where if I want to place that implant, ideally, it's going to be up into the sinus. And so that I showed him, and that this is my chance to describe kind of the sinus lift procedure, and uh, show him how, although it is extra cost, um, there is value in getting the the appropriate implant in place. Um, and so, so you can kind of show them and you can talk about the complications that science lists, you know, are, can make it more difficult. Um, what you always want to do is you want to stay ahead of it. You want to stay ahead of the complications. You want to make sure your patients are aware um, of the things that can happen before they happen. What's the worst thing you can do is uh, never talk about this with the patient. You go to do the surgery, doesn't go well, you hit complications. And the patient's like, what's up? What happened? And I tell you, when you sit there and you go over this and you show them the complications and the surgery goes well, uh, you become the hero. They, they know there's going to be some troubles, but uh, when it goes successful, um, you're, you're a hero. So um, really nice. And then um, so here you can see I have my crown in place, um, making sure that's exactly where um, I want that to go. So. I use this on every case where I'm teaching those patients. Um, we're going to go start to finish on a few cases here in a little bit. Um, so you can see the from start to finish what this looks like, how I did this. All right, I'm going to switch back here. OK, so, so some of the things I use it for. So, so here's another patient communication. Um, here's an. Uh, case I was planning for a patient on the lower lower uh, right is tooth number 29. Over here, you can see she's had some bone loss. Uh, I think this was um, yeah, a, a root canal tooth that had a pretty good size infection. This is after the grafting. But right here, I see the distance from my uh, crown margin to the implant is just taller than I would like. It's about five millimeters. And uh, then it could could propose a pretty tall clinical crown. It wouldn't be very aesthetic, could be harder to clean, um, things like that. And uh, this is where I sit down with the patient and talk to her about the pros and cons uh, of doing something like this and what we're getting into. And in this case, she said, no, I, I, I would love to do ideal. I'm okay to pay for the additional bone grafting it, that would require to get that implant in the right place. And so from here, we were able to first bone graft and then go back and place the implant in the right place. Here's another case. Um, this patient you see, we're planting this implant underneath a bridge and she's had some buccal bone loss. All right, so if I wanted to place that in the ideal position, I'm a little lacking on the buccal. Could this work without bone grafting? Yeah, very possible. However, uh, again, I, I told you I don't like to take chances. I want to avoid complications. So I was able to use this technology and tool to show her, hey, if we did a little additional bone grafting at the time of implant placement um, here, it'll just increase your chances. I can still place this implant in the best position possible. And, um, and in that case, she, uh, another patient that she went ahead and she wanted to place it in the right place. And so we we're able to do that additional bone grafting. And I had that all planned. I knew exactly what I was going to be doing um, going into the case. All right, so precise placement and avoid complications. So here's the case. Um, I'm sure a lot of you see these uh, root canal that is successful. However, the crown's not. Okay, a lot of times these crowns, it makes the tooth brittle, they break off at the gum line, and we're looking at doing an implant. So one thing that you may see here is tooth number four has a significant tilt towards the mesial right here at the apex. Um, so could get close to that implant, could be a little hairy. Um, so we're using a 3D printed surgical guide using the method that I'm going to walk you through here in a little bit. We were able to get this implant placed and sneak it in right in between that root, the two roots exactly where I'd want it to go. And you can see it, it doesn't take much um, 
to get off. If you're doing this free hand and you're off in just the slightest, um, there is a great chance that um, you could go into that root and you're doing two implants now instead of one. Um, so, so you're off just in the slightest. What's going to happen? That, that implant could go into that root and you have an unhappy patient, you have an unhappy dentist. And this is the kind of things that doing things guided can avoid. Um, here's another case I did uh, of an implant tooth number three, really close to that sinus. Um, this is uh, an implant you could see went right up to the floor of that sinus. And, um, you know, before guided, this, this case would make me sweat. I would probably even think about just referring this out. Um, however, um, I've gained so much confidence in these um, 3D printed surgical guides that I know that the implant's going to go exactly as to plan. And you can see here um, at time of placement that it went right to that floor of the sinus, but not into it, um, just as I planned. So um, just just really gives you that confidence and and makes those surgeries go go really well. Here's one that didn't go well, all right? Not my case, okay? I just Google searched implant into the sinus and this is what I came up with. So this is the kind of things you wanna avoid, right? Um, obviously this is worst case scenario. This is a, an implant that not only made it into the sinus cavity but it traveled up the nasal canal, right? We don't want this, okay? Um, you want to know what you're getting yourself into. A 3D printed surgical guide and planning this ahead of time, I promise, can avoid things like this. Um, just another example, when you're doing lower implants, um, you definitely, one of the major things you wanna avoid is that inferior alveolar nerve. Um, into the nerve is a bad day. Um, it could lead to numbness and things. So um, you can see just the accuracy of this guide, um, the distance between that distal of that molar um, just really nice. And, and what I love about this crown approach where you can see your crown, a lot of times I've found that when I get implants referred or from other offices that weren't guided, these most distal implants are placed too far distally. And so then it creates almost like a cantilever torque area, a, a place potentially that could fail in the long run. Super common mistake, but uh, gaining this, it just allows it to go right where you plan it, right where the crown needs to be, um, exactly what you want. So again, you can use this, this, and I'll show you this here in a second, um, how we got to this point, but you can even mark your nerves so you know exactly where that's located to avoid um, this next slide. So here is a case that came to us from another office. Um, she had recently placed, uh, she had two implants placed on the lower left and she could not feel her lip um, on the outside and she was kind of freaking out. Well, sure enough, we took a CT scan and those two implants that the, the dentist had placed right into her inferior alveolar nerve and um, not a good day. So, Please, um, yeah, use this, use the comb beam, avoid things like this, all right? I'm not here to scare you, but at the same time, um, this is definitely avoidable. So let's switch it over. Um, let me just check. We may have a question here. Um, all right, Brandon, let's see if we can get to your question here at the end. Um, we'll go over that, but... Um, let's switch this over. I'll show you this lower, how you mark the nerve, how you plan out um, a case and, and some of the things I like to use it for. So I'm going to switch over here. So we've gotten on this patient, we've taken a CT scan and we've also gotten an intraoral scan using the CEREC. Now, um, both of which are done by assistance. Okay, I, I do double check it to make sure we have all good information. Um, but this is done um, by assistance and they take uh, from this point, this is where I get it. You can see here up at the very top, it walks you through step by step 
all the way from the diagnosing portion to the final um, export for your surgical guides. Okay, really easy software, I love it. So this first step, you can adjust the orientation of the CT scan. Okay, so, you know, sometimes you'll get something like this um, where the patient's chin was down, wasn't level, so you can correct for that. Um, real easy to do there. Um, I, you like to use these measuring tools. Okay, so if I come over here, um, in fact, let me come back to this orientation. I like to make sure that this line falls within the arch. And then I also increase the thickness to the maximum. That way it captures all the data and it's not cutting anything off. If you're not seeing some things that you think should be there, it's probably because this thickness is too thin. See how over here that shrinks and then it grows. So I'm gonna put that all the way, hit okay. And now I can come here and I can look um, at this implant site. Um, I can see, you can use things like uh, measuring tools um, to measure different locations. Um, and then from here, we're gonna go ahead and move to prepare. Okay, so when I go to prepare, the first thing I want to do is I want to import that interval scan that I told you about. Okay, so what my assistants do, they the scanner is on our uh, network. So they put it into a specific file on the network so I know exactly where um, that's located. So I'm gonna import that file. Um, the, the assistants even designed the crown. It's a good time for them to practice crown design on the CEREC. Um, so they actually design this crown. They find it fun, gives them good practice um, if you are a CEREC dentist, so they can work on crown design. But once that's imported, you'll see that um, you'll see your CT scan and your intro scan. Then you need to just give it some points of correlation. Um, I try to avoid any kind of metal areas where it could have some um, artifacts. So I'll start here, I double click on the premolar and then double click on the same tooth on the CT scan. Double click on this one, double click here, double click on the canine, double click there. And then you can kind of jump around, I'll maybe skip a tooth. You want five points of data. So double click here, double click there. Once you've done that, you just hit next, and then it will merge the two. Um, here you want to inspect it. You can kind of see rolling through, see how that's lining up. If the patient moved in the scan, uh, that's something to watch out for. You just want to see, make sure that is just real intimate. And um, that way you know when you have your surgical guide, it'll be accurate in that location. So that looks really nice. And then I'm going to hit finish. Okay. So if you look here, now we have our CT scan with our intraoral scan over the top. All right. So, that, so the next thing I like to do is for lowers, I like to mark the nerve. Okay. I'm going to fix my arch real quick. For some reason, I can't see that where I want. always the risk of live cases don't go into some complications. Okay. Yeah, my cross-sectional. All right. There we go. So when I throw in an implant, I come here to plan. So I prepared, I come into plan. I'm gonna throw in an implant so we can locate that better. Um, I'm doing tooth number 30. Um, I place Astra EV implants. So you'll see that these, uh, the library has all sorts of dental implants in here. 
um, pretty much any implant under the sun um, should be in here. You can keep the ones that you use most often um, that automatically populates. You can even just do a generic implant if you wanted. Um, but here I'm gonna show you a Astra EV. Um, I like to get a 4.8 if I can and a, and a posterior molar and hit okay. So now we see it goes ahead and places it pretty much underneath as close as we can to that crown. Um, right now that's looking really nice. Um, so from here, something I like to do, um, we're taught that biological width, we want three to four millimeters. So I like to make sure that my implant is at least three to four millimeters below that gingival margin of the crown. So you can come over here to this ruler tool and you can measure about three millimeters, three to four millimeters. Um, so you can see that and you can move your implant accordingly. Um, over here under plan, you can add the sleeve. So you can actually see that uh, sleeve um, that's gonna be placed in there. Um, you have different options for these surgical guides. If you want to 3D print it, you're going to select this digital guide. And then something I love about the Astra EV system, um, all the information is already populated. There is no uh, sleep position calculations that you have to do, no D2, D3 values. It knows the kit that you're going to use, makes it easy. Now, if you don't use those, the SciCat, the software uh, owners, they can help walk you through exactly what these sleep positions need to be. So don't panic. But again, I like things easy. This populates it for you. All you do is select the EV guided surgery and hit OK. And now I can see not only on my crown, but I also have the sleeve in place. If I come up here, I can see where that sleeve is going through and almost shows me kind of a bullseye target where I want that to be placed underneath that crown. Um, so for instance, if I was off, it would look something like that coming out the lingual, even though here in my, my scan and my cross-sectional, you can tell that's the um, good bone back there. However, it's not where that final implant needs, uh, that crown needs to go. So by positioning it back, getting it underneath um, right in the center of that crown, I can ensure um, a proper placement. So that's one example. From here, I can go and just move on to this next step to treat. Okay, you can export, you can order the surgical guide. Um, this is a process that's just real seamless once you have all the information in place. Um, you just add it to a shopping cart, you select what guide you want it to, to make. And um, here in a second, I'm going to show you the guides that I do that I get it in 20 minutes. It's called a rapid guide. Um, but SciCat will walk you through these steps exactly. So let's do one more case from start to finish. So this is the case that I showed you in the slides that had that number four with the root that kind of tilted apically. And uh, so I can show you how I placed and planned that implant to avoid that, um, to make sure that uh, I wasn't doing two implants. So again, you get your, your cone beam data. First thing you wanna walk through your steps across the top. You want to position, orient your, your CT scan. Like I said, I bump up my thickness so I can see that full amount of information. From here, you can look at things. I can come up here. Um, I can look at um, distances. I can measure how much space I have between the roots, things like that. Um, you can use this. I even can go um, and use this. You can create an angle, which I'll show here in a second how I use that. Prepare. I'm going to import my um, intraoral scan. 
So this is something my assistant goes ahead and puts on my network. They've already designed the crown. I import this file. We're going to match the data. Okay, just like before, we're going to just click on the facial of five teeth. I'm just double clicking. The technology's gotten so good that um, this isn't a rocket science anymore. It's as long as you get it pretty close. So I have my five points. I go ahead and hit next. And then I'm going to inspect that merge, make sure that I'm seeing that the intro scan lines up with that CT scan and uh, all that's looking really good. Hit finish. Okay, so now I have my CT scan and my intro scan merged. I come here and let's move to plan. I'm going to plan my implant. All right, my, you'll see my favorite implant, Astra EV, already populated. For a premolar, I like to use a 3.6. If I can get a, a 11 length, that would be great. I hit OK. It automatically places that implant underneath my crown. All right, it's close, but obviously, you see, we have some work to do. OK, so let's go ahead and we can grab this and start to position this implant underneath my crown. And I'm looking at these different um, cross sections. So I'm looking cross sectional. I'm looking over here in this tangential view. This is where I can see. I'm going to go ahead and delete this measurement. I can see those roots, that position where those are coming, making sure that's not hitting that. Um, in cases like this, I'll even, um, you can line things up by using this diagnose tool, drawing a line down the long axis of the tooth here. And you can take this and almost make an angle. So I can measure my angle right here. So ideally I want it at about 90, right? So I know I'm paralleling this, uh, this root. So moving that just slightly. And then once I have it pretty close, I always grab here in this cross sectional view. You can actually make it move around that site in 360 degrees to see where those roots are lining up. You can see the floor of the sinus. And um, all of that is looking nice. So um, something like this, once you do a few of these cases, this, this may take me uh, five minutes or less. Um, to plan these and uh, to turn these around. Um, you get really good at these quick. And then once you have this planned exactly where you want it to go, you're gonna make sure you have to put what type of guide you're gonna make. So if you wanna 3D print it in office, you select this digital guide. It populates the sleeve for you. Uh, if you're placing an Astra EV guided, um, and hit OK. Now we can see our sleeve. Everything's in place. Now I can move on to treat um, and order my what I call a rapid guide, which um, to finish up here, let me show you what that looks like. So the last few minutes, let me show you this rapid guide. Um, this is actually came out in the last uh, month or two. This is SciCat's um, newest uh, surgical guide that they can turn around to you in 20 minutes. And they say it's powered by artificial intelligence. Pretty exciting. So um, what's really nice about it is the turnaround time. Okay, the, you get these files back. By the time you order it, you get the file back in 20 minutes. The cost is huge. It only costs $19.90 to get this design and then you get the file ready to 3D print. Um, the process, um, the things that you need is that software I showed you, you need the SciCat implant software version 2.0.1 or higher, and then the latest SciCat implant database. So those of you already using SciCat, that's something I did have to go in and download to make sure I could use that. Um, so you plan your implant, you order the SciCat digital guide step one, 
You'll see the next step on the SICAP portal. You'll have the two options. You can do the traditional way, which is about a 48 hour turnaround. You do have someone who looks at it and can avoid any complications for you. So there is a benefit, but there's added cost. Um, or you can order the um, $20 rapid guide. Um, there's some parameters and things I'm not gonna get into the details on. Um, we can ask, ask that in the Q&A section. Um, but once you get the file back, um, it's all ready to go in a 3D printed format that you can send to your 3D printer software. Um, this is an example on the Sprint Ray. Um, here's what it looks like there on the printer bed. Um, I do add supports to make sure that the guide doesn't slump or anything during the printing process. Um, again, from this point, this is where my systems take over. They trim it. Uh, they print it, they process it, they trim it. They also add this sleeve. The sleeves are actually metal sleeves. So you're not drilling on just this resin guide. So it's nice and strong. So you do um, order these sleeves. They're autoclavable. You can reuse them, very inexpensive. Um, they put in a, in a sterilized bag for ready for surgery day. Um, this is just a quick example. This is the guided kit I use. This is Astra's guided surgery kit. Um, I brought the wash tray, so it's just really easily cleansable. Uh, some people who have this may have seen some rust in the past on the other kits. This one avoids that, so I, I really like this kit. Um, and then um, just to wrap up, I know we kind of uh, ran out of time real quick, but um, you know, artificial intelligence has taken over. Maybe instead of the matrix someday, it's gonna look like this. Um, uh, as we more and more incorporate the dental technology that we have, um, it just makes it more seamless, makes it better, and uh, hopefully have inspired some of you guys um, to dive into this um, and, and place your implants uh, guided. So we'll have some more webinar series, maybe diving into more of the details on the processes uh, coming up. So stay tuned for that from Henry Shine. Um, but I want to thank everybody for your time. Um, I know everybody's busy on these nights. Uh, please contact me, email me if you have any questions. Uh, look me up on Facebook or Instagram. I'm just trying to get that going um, with some content. Um, and happy to help anybody who wants to get into this process. So uh, again, thank you. And thank you, Henry Shine, for uh, having me on here. So let's um, open it up to questions um, sure, here. Sure. Yeah, go ahead, Corinne, you take over. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Dr. Titanzar. So the first question we have is from Robert. Can you use an angulated screw channel abutment? I think Absolutely. that was during your last case. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So um, let me just show you an example. Let's just mm -hmm. switch that over. Um, you'll see up here under plan, okay, You'll see you can put the implants. I put the sleeve in right in the middle. What do you see? You can actually see the abutments. All right. This actually will show you all of the available abutments for this implant line. Okay. So let's look at this 18 angled abutment. All right. So let's say I wanted to do a 20 degree. It looks like it only has a 20 degree um, angled. It has different collar heights even. Um, so let's go ahead and put this on. It actually will put your um, angled abutment in there. So for those cases, yeah, uh, definitely I can see the case and it has come up where just the bone's not there and you need to use an angled abutment. Um, let's say in something like this, you can actually see where that angled abutment is going to come out and according to your implant. So really, really nice to even go as far as seeing the abutments in the software. Perfect. Thank you. We also have a question from Adam who asks any question with clearance, getting the drill guide, uh, drill bit into the mouth. Yes. Okay. I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie. Um, that can be an issue. Um, what he's saying is sometimes if a patient can't open wide enough to get a guide in place, and also the the osteotomy um there are a few things i've done some tricks to avoid that um let me show you so um let me delete this angled abutment 
All right. So one thing right off the bat is you've got to look at your sleeve position. All right. Where is that sleeve going to end up? Because that's where the top of your sleeve, essentially where that drill needs to go. And um, if it's pretty high up, let's say if this sleeve position was down here, yeah, that could be tough. Um, one thing you'll notice is um, depending on your implant length can change the sleeve position. So watch as I, let's say if I was going to put in a nine millimeter implant, notice how that sleeve position just came up about, uh, I think it's four millimeters. Um, so knowing that if I'm worried about someone opening, I don't place a nine millimeter implant in those cases because I know that sleeve height is going to be taller. I'll look at maybe placing an eight millimeter or an 11 millimeter because that's how that, that specific kit is set up. So always checking your sleeve position. Um, that being said, I will say, um, uh, was it Eric who asked? I, I've never had a case where I wasn't able to get it in. Now, some cases I do have to go ahead and put my implant drill inside the guide and then seat the guide at the same time. That is one option. There are sleeves that um, have a window in it to where if you're worried, you can, let's see if I can um, change the sleeve to show that. So there, there are certain sleeves that are made that you can actually have um, a slot in the sleeve so you can um, put your seat your surgical guide and slide your implant drill from the side if you're really worried about that um, you probably have to get a special sleeve and have SciCat make that guide for you it's only 120 dollars versus the 20 but uh, definitely worth it if you're worried in that case but that being said I, I can honestly say i've never had a case where i wasn't able to use it but it, it can be tough and especially in second molars. All right, thank you. Um, we have another question from Preston who asks, any recommendations for resources for learning implant placement? Yeah, good question. Um, you know, this is a Henry Schein course. I'm not sure who I can or cannot endorse, but I'll just tell you what I did. Because um, I do think having taking some good courses not only expands your knowledge of course but gives you some credibility uh, with your patients and gives you practice uh, before you really dive in um, i took the implant seminars continuum um, through dr garg it's out of miami it was like a, a about a year-long course um, where it fly out um, like uh, once or twice a quarter took the continuum learned a ton. Um, he also provides a clinic, I think in Costa Rica or something where you can fly out and place a bunch of implants, do sinus lifts, extract thirds, um, all kind of uh, to get that confidence. Um, that being said, um, picking your cases correctly and having this technology is more valuable than any course I've, I've, I've taken. It's just and makes it a breeze. If you pick your cases, you have a surgical guide, um, these, these procedures, you're placing implants in under 30 minutes. And, and the, the tough part is in sometimes the bone grafting, getting the site ready for the implant. That's kind of the most difficult in my opinion. But if you have a good bone and a surgical guide, um, placing implants is, I think is a, is a slam dunk. All right. Thank you. Well, thank you again, Dr. Titan, sir, for the great presentation this evening. If anyone does have any outstanding questions, please email us at webinars at henryshine.com. And as a thank you for attending, everyone will receive the recording via email in the next week. Thank you all for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you on future webinars. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. Thank you. Have a great night.